Hi, hello. Welcome to the episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is December the 14th, 2023. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, do I have anything really major to report in on this fine Thursday? No, not really. Uh, food corner was pasta, you know, pretty regular stuff. Uh, let me see here. Now, I, now I won't keep you in suspense. We'll go ahead and do our uh, startup, and then we will get into some news. Ooh. Okay. From Reuters. Seven arrested in Germany, Denmark, the Netherlands over suspected terrorism plots. Seven people, including four suspected Hamas members, were arrested in Denmark, Germany, and the Netherlands on suspicion of planning attacks on Jewish institutions in Europe, authorities in three countries said on Thursday. The arrests were made as... Israel pressed on with its operation to destroy Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Um, once again, and, and this just becomes such a cliche thing that they like all the reports will always at some point let you know and remind you that this all started on October 7th, even though, you know, we know that there's a lot more history and time in that. But, you know, that is just a cliche thing. And, you know, I, I kind of run the line. Um, all right. Uh, three of the suspects were detained in Berlin and another was detained in the Netherlands. All four longstanding members of Hamas with close links to the leadership of Hamas's military branch. German prosecutors said in a statement. A Hamas official denied those held were connected to the group. Three people arrested in Denmark will be charged under the terrorism clause of the criminal code and put in front of a judge for prelim pre preliminary, I'm sorry, questioning. It is not clear if their link if there was a link between the arrests in Denmark and those in Germany and the Netherlands. Dutch national Nazi R was arrested by police in Rotterdam, while Lebanon born Ab Abdelhamid Al A Al A and Ibrahim L R as well as Egyptian national Mohammed B were arrested in the German capital. A German prosecutor said. Ooh, that's a long one. Had a part two too. Uh, Al Ab Abed Al Hamid Al A had been assigned by Hamas leaders in Lebanon with finding sources for weapons. Prosecutor said the weapons were due to be taken to Berlin and kept ready for potential terrorist attacks against Jewish institutions. Prosecutor said following the terrible attacks by Hamas on the Israeli population, attacks on Jews and the Jewish institutions have also increased in our country in the recent weeks. German Justice Minister Marco Buschmann said in a statement on the detentions. We must therefore do everything we can to ensure that Jews in our country do not fear for their safety again. And then from Hamas official Sami Abu Zuri uh, told Reuters, We deny there are members of Hamas detained in Denmark, Germany, or any other European country. Publishing these allegations aim to in influence the mass rallies that are supportive of, the Palest of Palestine in Europe. Um... So yeah, I mean, this was uh, just big news that kind of hit before I went live. So I was like, hey, let's go ahead and cover it. I know I didn't cover earlier in December that there was an incident with uh, alleged Hezbollah agents um, in Brazil. And uh, yeah, that one kind of slipped through my radar. And also there was things about it that like when I started like doing a little bit more research, listening to other, you know, podcasts, stuff like that. It kind of sounded a little bit, I don't want to say fishy, but like, I don't know. It was just, it felt like something I was like, oh, 
okay, I'm not hearing any other updates other than like a couple of articles in the initial moment. So I it, it fell past me. Uh, but this one, like I said, it dropped and I was like, okay, let me go ahead and talk about that. Do a little old news, do that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll keep you posted on this. Obviously, it's, you know, unfortunate, you know, about any kind of terrorism activity. That shit's scary. That shit's unsetting. Um, but um, yeah, you know, I'll keep you posted on any kind of updates I find on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, um, you know, you got to work against that kind of narrative, that kind of ideology when it comes to that. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, we are always going to be rooting for Palestine. It's always free Palestine, but it's not the idea of like, oh yeah, man, we love terrorism. Like it sucks that you have to to do the thing of like Hamas bad, you know, terrorism bad, but you do have to do that because there are people who are actively doing things and actively, um, you know, spreading a narrative of aggression and violence. Um, and, you know, once again, that's not something I want to support and, um, you know, push. That's not that's not the the way, <laughs> if you will. But let me go ahead and move on. Move on to the next beat. Uh, this one is from Reuters. Uh, uh, Congress passes eight hundred and eighty six billion dollar defense policy bill. Biden to sign into law. More than two-thirds of the U.S. House of Representatives voted in favor of a defense policy bill on Thursday that includes a record $886 billion in annual military spending and authorizes policies such as aid for Ukraine and pushback against China in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, let's see. The House backed the National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, by 310 to 118, with strong support from Republicans and Democrats. It was more than two thirds majority required to pass the measure and send it to the White House for President Joe Biden to sign into law. Separate from the appropriations bills that set government spending levels, the NDAA authorizes everything from pay raises for troops, um, this year's will be 5.2%, to purchases of ships, ammunitions, and aircrafts. Uh, Let's see here. I feel like there's a lot of yada, yada, yada. I was really surprised, though, that they were able to get this bill in, really with the inclusion of the aid to ukraine uh i kind of thought they were just gonna go into a recess without fucking handling it and they were just gonna let ukraine hang but uh the bill extends one measure to help ukraine the ukraine security assistance initiative through the end of 2026 authorizing 300 million for the program in the fiscal year ending september 30th of 2024 and the next one however that figure is a tiny is tiny is a tiny, I feel like they worded that weird. However, the that figure is tiny compared to the $61 billion in assistance for Ukraine. Let me just read it the way that they said it, my bad. However, that figure is a tiny compared to the $61 billion in assistance for Ukraine. Biden has asked Congress to approve to help Kiev as it battles a Russian invasion that began in February of 2022. I know I am really bad at reading. Obviously, if you're a longtime listener, you know this. But that, sometimes I read something and I'm like, did they word that funny or am I just funny in the head? I don't fucking know. Anyway, hopefully you got the gist of that. Um, but yeah, that number did like the 300 million that threw me off. I'm like, that doesn't seem right. Even though I know my poor ass, that's a big number. But like, that doesn't seem right. And it's like, yeah, Isaiah, because usually these numbers are accompanied by a billion, not a million. And it does go to show that there, these are the changes, these are the signs of the times that like, oh, we definitely want to show our solidarity with Ukraine. We want to keep, you know, helping them out. Also a bit tangential news. I'm doing it again. Sorry. Um, There's the ascension plan for Ukraine to get accelerated into the EU. That's, that's been a thing. That's been a conversation piece of the week. Um, Probably not getting into that on in this week's scheme of news, but this is me talking about it now. Um, you know, we're going to see how that goes. I know, I believe it's Hungary that's kind of like saying, hey, uh, we don't know how we really feel about this. And they've kind of been a little bit of a thorn in the conversation. Uh, Victor Orban, 
uh, who's president of Hungary, uh, very cozy with Vladimir Putin and the like, yada, yada, yada. So he's been a bit of a fly in the ointment in the conversation. But um, yeah, I mean, that's something that's a thing, them getting fast tracked in, um, you know, obviously they're doing their whole, you know, fight with Russia. That's that's obviously been a, you know, an ongoing thing. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, the the amount is smaller, but it is something. And I was still surprised that they are like saying, hey, you know, we were wrapping this up. Also, throughout this article, I didn't see anything about Israel. So I don't know if that's going to be something that they are going to get to next year, I guess. And then I guess Israel is going to get left hanging in there. I don't know. Um, but I do know that, you know, I've said this before, I'll say it a thousand times. We are going to be backing Israel to the hilt. You know, uh, I mean, uh, for better or worse, right or wrong, it seems that we are standing in lockstep with them. Um, you know, we might say, "Oh, you guys are being a little bit too, uh, but too brutal with your, you know, your your genocide." We won't say that, but you know, oh, you're being a little bit much. But they don't stop with the support. So you know, maybe they decided to say, "Hey, we're gonna split it up." I don't know, but I'll keep you posted. Figured yeah, that was a good and relevant update. Uh, not that I'm doing it justice, but you know, you know. Anyway. Let's let's move along. Let's get to the Associated Press. Ohio Senate clears ban on gender affirming care for minors, transgender athletes, and girls sports. A Republican backed proposal that would drastically affect how LGBTQ youth in Ohio live their everyday lives cleared the state Senate on Wednesday. Despite adamant opposition from parents, medical providers, and education professionals who call it cruel and potentially life-threatening. Senate, uh, state senators, by a vote of 24 to 8, approved a multifaceted bill that would ban gender-affirming care for minors and block transgender student athletes from participating in girls' and women's sports. A lone Republican... Senator Nathan Manning of Northeast Ohio joined Democrats in a no vote. And I got to say, I mean, I don't obviously know the career of Senator Nathan Manning. I'm not that uh, politically degenerate, but um, I I'm gl glad at least to see someone say, no, this is this is where I'm going to draw the line. This is crazy. Like, you know, we got to treat people like fucking human beings here. And this is not doing that. But um, but still, uh, you know, our state Republicans persisted and it looks like this is going to be a thing. Um, I know the bill is going to Republican Governor Mike DeWine uh, for final approval. DeWine has not said whether he will sign it. He previously had, expect, had expressed doubts about the sports restrictions, saying such decisions were best made by individual sports organizations. Uh, let's see here. Uh, under the legislation, minors in Ohio would be prohibited from taking puberty blockers and undergoing other hormone therapies or receiving gender reassignment surgery that would further align them with their gender identity. Which I got to say, the surgery part is something that, once again, from what I've been researching and seeing, that is not something that is like something that is common when we're talking K through fucking 12. When you're talking surgery, you are usually waiting till you are a literal, by American standard, adult, 18 years old. So I do not understand why that is a big talking point that kind of gets ratcheted up in the psyche of people having this conversation, at least that I run into and talk to. Uh, the puberty blockers, I know that there are some people, the, the puberty blockers, um, other hormone therapies, yada, yada, yada. Um, that is something that a lot of people want to stay in the conversation and talk about because that is something that is K through 12. And they're like, well, it's permanent. And they're, you know, you, you can't reverse it. Um, more times than not, from what I've seen and read, that is not true. I did want to drop an article here, and I'll leave the source here from Healthline. Are puberty blockers permanent? What you should know before treatment. Now, in that article, they talk about a lot of stuff there, a little bit of Q&A. But um, I know that it is one of those things that it is not like a, like a black and white thing, of course. But there's a general run here that is like, hey, you can go through this, you can do this, and it's only going to stop the process, and you can be the person that you want to be. You know what I mean? And that is the part that is a life-saving thing. When you get to be the person that you want to be, you don't have to hide it. You don't have to go through, you know, the secrecy through your whole adolescence. Sorry, I had some peanuts before and it got stuck in my mouth. Um, you don't have to hide who you are 
that makes a whole difference in your growing experience and your adolescence. And I know that like the conservative narrative as they're kicking around this fucking, you know, political football, this cultural football is that they want to say that it's like, yeah, you're, it's like giving drugs to kids. It's like, no, dude, you're literally allowing a human being to be themselves at their most formative point. That That is a that is a world changing thing. And is it a private person of that? It's just barbaric. It's just draconic to me. And I don't understand how you're going to use this for fucking points. And especially with the, 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 the trans athlete thing, when we are talking about literally a super small percentage here, and, and you're, you're saying, oh, well, you, you should be doing your own, being your own division, or da 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 da. Like, why? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. And it's like, well, it's unfair. It's like, it's unfair to this, this group of people who are naysaying it. And it's like, usually, this is such a small percentage of actually people who are mad about it on these teams in these groups of people, you know, performing the sport. But those people get blown up and it's like, yeah, they're, they're, their rights are being violated by this person living their life. I guess. I don't know. I, I do find sitting down with people, it is hard to convince them. At least it's been for me. So I, I, I often give up. I get so fucking tired of this. But I know how I feel about it. So, like, when I come on here and I talk about it, yes, yeah, like... I'm going to defend these people who are being silenced. That's crazy to me that in my own state that you're just not allowed to be who you want to be. Once again, you can, if you have the, the moment of saying, oh, I don't want to do, like, maybe this isn't right for me. I've done this now and I've gone to this point and I don't want to go any further. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But guess what? Because of the science, because of the, the, the medicines that we have, you can just be like, all right, cool, we're, we're done with this. And you can start doing the process back. Once again, I know that's not a perfect thing. I know that there are differences for different people. But overall, this is not something that is going to, like, damage you in a way that you cannot reverse it. And one, and more times than not, when you talk to these people, they're like, I'm glad to be able to have this opportunity. Not having this opportunity, I don't know where I would be right now. You know what I mean? So, once again, I think doing this, conservatives making this fucking argument for points is crazy to me. But I have sat down and talked with people who are like they, they like they have this like Joe Rogan like aspects about it that it's just like no nah, man is a man a woman is a woman and you gotta be in your proper place in your proper division brother that's crazy why would you why are you trying to fight science <laughs> these people are these people are confused <laughs> ugh ah it, it bothers me it bugs me um so yeah I know I'm a bit flustered I know I'm just kind of doing the spins here. Um, I, there was something else I did want to cover before we move on. I'm sorry. Uh, at least 20 states have passed some version of a ban on transgender athletes playing on K through 12 and collegiate sports teams statewide. Those bans would be upended by a regulation proposed by President Joe Biden's administration that is set to be finalized early next year. The rule announced in April states that a, uh, the blanket bans violate Title IX. The landmark federal gender equality legislation enacted in 1972. So that was something I didn't know. And I was like, okay, let me go ahead and put that on the pod. But yeah, I mean, um, I know there's a lot of back and forth here on this article. Feel free to read that. Um, you know, I, I would hope, I would hope, I would pray, I beseech my, my listeners that hopefully that we're on the same page about this kind of stuff. But, you know, if not... I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> it's crazy that you're here and you're listening. That's that's pretty cool and fair and balanced of you, bro. I it, or or sis. I, I don't know. Hey, do your thing. That's cool. But I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I just cannot stress enough that I I really do feel like it's so important to defend just the the ideal that you can be yourself. Like, I you don't even need to talk about a fucking label or whatever. Like, I'm just talking about people being fucking people. You should be allowed to be that. <laughs> oh, we're talking about gender, brother. Like, I guess, dude, but that shit is, it just does not matter. It's, it, it is, it is as serious to me as a name sometimes. Like, you can be who you want to be. That is the important thing. That is the most important thing to me as an individual. And I would want that for my fellow human being to be allowed to be who they want to be. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know. I don't know. Call me crazy. Um, all right, let me do one more thing. It's a bit lighter. Um, I mean, but granted, um, it's full of bullshit. Hey, there you go. 
I'm trying to be cheeky. I'm so bad at this. I'm not, I'm not a good podcaster. <laughs> All right, let me take my break and then we'll, we'll go ahead and finish this thing off. Okay. <coughs> Our last story <coughs> also comes <coughs> from, <coughs> sorry, oh boy, it's like a bomb went off of my brain <coughs> and I'm coughing. <coughs> okay. We're so back. Okay. From the Associated Press, bull on track, bull on tracks disrupts trains between Newark and New York. A bull, a loose bull in New Jersey's largest city found its way onto train tracks, snarling rail traffic for a while Thursday before it was captured, authorities said. A ruddy brown bull with long, dark tip horns stood on the tracks at Newark Penn Station, prompting a police response and holding up train traffic between New Jersey and New York Penn Station for nearly an hour, according to New Jersey Transit. Police officers eventually cornered the animal in a fence lot about three miles or 4.8 kilometers away from the station, according to a statement from Newark Police Safety Director Fritz Fraj. Fraj. We're going to say Fraj. I, my heart wants to say Fraj A because they have a little accent there. But yeah, there we go. From the hip. The bull will be sent to a local animal sanctuary, uh, Fraj said. No injuries were reported. Exactly how the bull came to be loose, who owns it, and other details about the bovines walk around New York, not Newark, it's Newark, it's Newark, New Jersey, weren't immediately available, or weren't immediately clear. It wasn't the first time a bull has been loose in Newark. In 2006, it took authorities 10 hours to capture a bull roaming around the city. Two years later, before that steer escaped a slaughterhouse and wandered around Newark before it was captured and sent to a sanctuary. NBC reported. So there you go. Um, I feel like that's the second bull story we've covered this year. So we're closing out the year on two bull stories. That's interesting to me. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's the episode. That's really all we have for today. If you'd like to support the effort, I do have a Patreon. Patreon.com says so Isaiah News. You become a newsie, and I shout you out at the top of the month. And then I am on Google for the email. IsaiahNews1 at gmail.com. Feel free to hit me up there for some feedback, whatever you need to get me, get me out, hit me up about. <laughs> and then uh, I'm on all the socials you're on. Um, feel free to follow me or the podcast uh, there. And then hopefully you're subscribed to the YouTube. It helps out a lot. We love all the new subscribers. Let's get those numbers up. Yee, yee. Uh, let's see here. Uh, thumbs up are great. Hit the bell. That'd be great. Uh, leave a cool comment because we love comments, man. Okay, I'm gonna go into a little bit of riff mode. I'm the, I've been listening to Always Sunny podcast. I'm an Always Sunny fan. I haven't watched the newest season yet. I need to, but um, I've I've been doing the podcast thing, and you know, of course, I love podcasts. Um, and they were they were talking, and at some point, Glenn Haverton, who's Dennis on the show, he says something they were talking about like reviews and stuff like on comments and like social media stuff like that and he goes but you know what the worst thing is you know what probably is the worst thing is if you're you're what you're doing has no comments on it and that that struck me like zeus's thunderbolt because that's such a real thing you know what i mean where it's like damn like i know that at the end of the day my ego takes a hit every time i look at the shit and i know i don't i don't see any comments i don't see any movement i don't see any buzz but I also know that I have to break that shit down because I do this shit for myself. This is a selfish endeavor. I do this shit for the love of the game. I am just happy to call myself a podcaster and be a podcaster. And I mean it. I get to say that with my chest. And that's nice. But I will say it is super fucking cool when I get fun comments. I always love the motherfuckers who hit that like button. And um, you do make my day when I see that kind of stuff. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
And yes, hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.